The Prime Minister, David Cameron, has just called it an absolutely disgusting, despicable act after a video was released purporting to show the murder of US hostage Stephen Stotloff. It's a dramatic escalation in the Islamic State's battle with the West and for the first time a direct threat to another hostage who the militants claim is British. The Prime Minister will be making a full statement later. The White House says it's urgently investigating the reports. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Rugman, has the latest. And a warning, some of you may find his report distressing. It is titled, A Second Message to America. And that message is no less brutal than the first. Two weeks ago, Islamic State threatened to kill Stephen Sotloff, an American journalist. Now it says it has carried out that threat. The video is too graphic for us to show it. But the voice is the same, apparently British voice, we heard on the final video of James Foley a fortnight ago. I'm back, Obama, and I'm back because of your arrogant foreign policy towards the Islamic State. Last week, Mr Sotloff's mother, Shirley, issued this appeal for Stephen's release from her home in Florida. As a mother, I ask your justice to be merciful and not punish my son for matters he has no control over. I ask you to use your authority to spare his life and to follow the example set by the Prophet Muhammad, who protected people of the book. But U.S. airstrikes have continued in northern Iraq. The jihadist siege of this town, Amerli, was brought to an end yesterday. And today's video blames American bombing for Sotloff's death. In the last few minutes, the American State Department gave this reaction to the news. If the video is genuine, we are sickened by this brutal act taking the life of another innocent American citizens. Our hearts go out to the Sotloff family, and we will provide more information as it becomes available. Mr. Sotloff was captured in Syria in August last year. He was aged just 31. The masked man in the latest video also shows what he claims is a British hostage, and he makes it all too clear that his life is also now at risk. Well, let's go to Washington now and our correspondent, Kylie Morris. Kylie, what's the White House saying on this? Well, the White House, uh, as yet, is still to confirm. I think, as we heard from the State Department, they're saying this. They're working to authenticate this video. They're saying that their intelligence agencies are working on that currently. We don't have a time frame for how long that will take. But certainly their position is, as we heard, that if this is true, they're sickened by this brutal act. I think the State Department has again reached for the language, calling it a terrorist act which is the same term that it used uh, in responding to the killing of James Foley only a few weeks ago. Um, it's, what is clear, certainly, is that this will have an impact on the way that people view uh, the threat of the Islamic State here in America. Everyone had seen that video from Shirley Sotloff, um, Stephen J. Sotloff's mother, in which she appealed to the caliph of the Islamic State, to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, saying, I want what every mother wants, to live to see her children's children. So certainly many people will hear of this and be shocked and saddened. And this really does pile on the pressure on the president, doesn't it? I mean, it certainly does. I, mean, I think, you know, we, we already expected that he would be going to the NATO summit with, with a set of options particularly after this gaffe at the end of last week where he said there was no actual strategy as yet for dealing with the Islamic State. Um, there was pressure that came out of the James Foley killing. That is what led in part to this kind of seeking uh, for uh, an international coalition, which the State Department keeps referring to. So certainly there will now be more pressure from the American public to see that the president is acting and that they, he is able to move ahead with this idea of some kind of an international coalition to address the threat of the Islamic State. And addressing that threat in a military way. Well, you know, we already have seen more than 130 American uh, airstrikes against targets inside Iraq, but certainly the idea that potentially that could be extended to Syria. But, uh, you know, really the most recent message from the president has been that he's, he's putting the brakes on, that he doesn't want to move any, any further ahead until the Iraqi government is settled and consolidated and until there's some kind of an international coalition. So the question will be whether or not he can maintain that course given what's just happened.